Welcome to the Fair Film Podcast. Today we have Joss on the show. Hi there, nice to see you. Honestly, man, it's awesome having you on the show. I've been using your software from the very beginning. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, it's, it's always like, you know, even though there's uh, quite a lot of people out there using the software now, it's always really nice to actually meet someone because you don't normally, you know, meet them, talk to them. Uh, so, yeah, if you've got any issues, though, <laughs> you know, I, I hope it's all going well. <laughs> No, I, I love the software, man. It's, it's an awesome software. Oh, good news. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, just in case some people don't know you? Yeah, so yeah, I'm uh, Josh Davies. I'm the founder of a small company called FX Home, and we make video editing, visual effects, uh, and image software, and our, our main product is called HitFilm, and that's used by about 5 million people around the world to do everything from YouTube videos to uh, you know small independent productions, even to previews on feature films and stuff like that. So it's used all over the place for all kinds of thing but we mainly care about you know up and coming creatives who are just getting into it for the first time that's like the big deal to us so yeah uh, we love we love the sort of new creatives they always do really inspiring stuff um i like to say also like congrats on five mil users for the software i remember from the very beginning from the start from hiff and that's honestly amazing yeah it's 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 kind of a bit hard to like get your head around you know like i remember when we were like you know trying to get towards ten thousand, and then trying to get towards like fifty thousand or a hundred thousand to see five million go by and now have the team i know they're they're working towards 10 million i know it um it's just it's just bewildering but i think the, the, the best thing for us is that there's this positivity around it which you know a lot of the time when things are like social social media led like uh like a lot of our stuff a lot of the content we makes on youtube um there can be quite a lot of negativity around that kind of stuff people can be quite angry or upset or rude and actually we just find as our community gets bigger everything's nicer everyone's just really positive wanting to learn being really like collaborative so yeah we really want that to continue all the way up to 10 million and beyond the amazing part like it's the community and like seeing what you guys do for like for the community, like having the awesome forum page and having the YouTube channel. And then like, I always love being active during the YouTube channel and the forums. Well, we've got loads going on this year to try and actually, we don't feel like the community is like where we want it to be. Um, we want to make it better. We want to have uh, more ways that the, you know, all the different people using the software can talk to us. So the forums are going to get some love. Uh, for sure, but then we're going to be introducing some new things as well because we've realized that the forum isn't a very good place for people to come and Tell us what features they want and what they want changing it's it doesn't have that kind of functionality for people to be able to vote on things and uh, We're going to be adding some additional tools so that people can come and like say hey I want to I want a button that makes my edit good and, <laughs> and Then other people can go. Yeah, I want that button too and then if it gets you know, far enough up the list with votes, then they're the things that we're going to work on because we really want to be user-led in what we do with the software. So the community is going to get some some love this year for sure. So who inspires you the most? Um, I think actually the users of our software, be they be that old users or even current users. So, um, you know, my favorite filmmakers in the world are people like Ryan Connolly. Uh, they're people particularly like Sam and Nico and Ren, all the guys over at Corridor Digital. Um, because they're good people and they're just like crazy creative. You get in a room with uh, Ryan Connolly uh, and I've been lucky to be in a room with him and his family uh, and they're hilarious. They are, they're, they're funnier than they are on their YouTube channel. They are just the nicest, most fun people. And, and, and being in a room with Sam and Nico from Corridor is about as intimidating as it gets. They are ideas all of the time and nothing really intimidates them. Anything's possible. So, uh, those guys, you know, I, I long to be as creative as any of them. So here's a little quick fire question. What is your favorite on Born? Honestly, I love all of them. All of them are amazing. But if you had to choose one. Uh, I, you know, uh, of the ones that I think heads up, uh, like the, the, the heads up one, like having, we work with some real amazing, uh, people for doing the actual video work in that, but like. The result was really good. It was really great to have Kirsty in there as well. Um, and the visual effect was nicely simple. Um, you know, you can get to a very high level of polish. I just watched Iron Man 
yesterday actually so i was watching the first iron man and i was like you know our visual effect that we did for this was actually pretty close to this i know they got better and better through the movies but yeah i was like that's pretty cool so yeah those those things for us doing something like that was really really awesome like honestly i love all the onboarding that you guys do like i try to go back and try to recreate them by the tutorials that you guys do absolutely well that's you know that's kind of the whole point of it actually you know we we love it when we see people that they they look at the stuff that we do there and we're not you know the best people in the world we know the software and uh Javert and tom are super talented in the software but loads of our users are super talented as well and they just go and you know if it's a launching point because the whole reason we do any of those things is because we were all creatives at one stage and the process of being a creative is very hard for anyone because you're what you want to create always outstrips your ability to do it. It even does that once you get really good at it, because then you're always seeing the far horizon of where you want to be. So the whole point of those of those videos and tutorials that we put together was to say, hey, you know, some of this stuff isn't as far out of reach as you seem. It seems to be to you. You know, you can you can just have a go at this and then you'll know that whatever it is, whether it's like 3D or really intense visual effects or editing, you're still only a couple of steps away from that. You can you can get there and it's hard work. We can't pretend that it's not. If you want to be an editor or a visual effects person or whatever, it is hard work. But it's not impossible. And and the tools, you kind of want them to get out of the way and let the creativity come to the front. Because, you know, any of us people that make software, we're just tools. We're, you know, and you know, we we we're not the main thing. The main thing is the creativity, and it's always frustrating when the tools stop the creativity. So we try and sort of flip that around if we can. So, what is your favorite effect to use in hit film? My favorite effect is the particle simulator effect, which honestly you could just do anything with that effect. It's just amazing. Well, I can cheat at this question because I know what's coming. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, I do like the particle simulator, although. In the last couple of years, I have not used it as much as I used to. So I did like some fairly static crowd simulation stuff with the particle simulator back in one of the older onboardings. Um, but all my favorite stuff to use in hit film is currently not in hit film. Uh, so uh, there's some amazing stuff coming. The team are always working really, really hard. But I would say in terms of like jumps forward with visual effects, um, they're, the biggest jumps forward are all in the next 12 months uh, from where we've been. So, you know, the biggest jumps forward since we initially added the 3D model engine, which was like way back at the start, we have the biggest jumps forward in terms of like TV level or film level visual effects coming in the next 12 months. So, yeah, I'm excited to get that stuff into people's hands because, you know, it's fundamentally next level. Yeah, so I think I think one of the things that has been even hinted at is the, the new lens flare stuff, which um, is just, it's completely different to our other engines in terms of its flexibility, in terms of its UI being easy to use. And you've got then Javert going through it and creating all the presets. And Javert is excellent even with our old lens flare engines putting stuff together but the new one it's like it's like magic it's really good so you want to tell me like when the copy actually started uh so yeah we were we, we were back uh like 2001 so we're coming up to 20 years uh and then there was like a lot of learning uh but yeah it was it was nearly 20 years ago wow that's amazing it's been like that long like 20 years that's awesome you feel old that's the only thing you know <laughs> so what is your advice for staying creative during these times i know you guys are doing competition right now during this recording but is there other ways you can stay creative during these times it's really hard actually i think you know when your life changes so fundamentally that you know and you're you know, I've, I normally find with creative stuff that restrictions and stuff is actually a really good thing when, oh my, oh, oh God, I've only got a day to turn this thing around. That's much better than you can have an, as much time as you want. It's much better to be given these sort of restrictions or you, you must use these colors or you must use this or must use that. But because of the amount of freedoms that everyone's had taken away at the moment, it can be really hard to like feel open to being creative because you're just getting through the days and just trying to work out when things are going to go back to normal so i think you know the important thing at the moment is everyone gives themselves a little bit of slack if 
things are hard and you and being creative is hard then know that it won't be like that forever things will get back to normal and uh just try you know uh sticking to smaller things that you love if you can't get into a big project and everything just try out you know going and seeing something that inspires you and out you know copying stuff but then trying to do something better is a really good way of learning so you know if you're not feeling inspired enough to go and actually create something brand new and lots of people are but if you're not then learn go out there's still like people are putting content out left right right and center so learn a new tool you know um i'd always recommend people learn blender you know go and do some blender tutorials because 3d is about as intimidating as it gets um but the opportunities it gets even with like really you know basic stuff creating 3d text or creating you know like basic elements um really can expand your filmmaking in a way that you know you you can't do unless you learn a 3d tool um and there's probably very few products out there that have as many tutorials as blender i actually like personally like been playing around with blender and you know like important to hit film we're going to be making that process better as well we know a lot of our users like blender Blender is suddenly, you know, it was always a, a really powerful product, but it's become a much better, like, to use product recently. Um, so, yeah, we want to make sure that we uh, we play very nicely with Blender. So what is your advice for getting started for, like, new people out there just using the software? Yeah, getting started on HitFilm, I would say, yeah, the main thing is don't be intimidated because you open it up. And there's a reason that HitFilm looks the way that it looks. And that's because, you know, we wanted to make it as a product that you learn the techniques that you can then go and apply to any other major video or visual effects product. We do not want you to learn hit film and then not know how to use Premiere and After Effects. It's the opposite way around. We want to teach you techniques that you can carry over, which means you get a fairly complicated interface compared to like a more bare bones or basic editor. But don't be intimidated by it. I mean, go and watch the tutorials on our website, you know, and particularly on YouTube. Um, and try and start with the basic stuff. You know, I find it always helps when I'm trying to learn something. If I do something and I start with something that I actually really want to do, I find it really hard to learn if it's just for the sake of learning. But if, if it's like, oh, I really want to make a cool title with my name at the bottom and I go and find a tutorial on how to do that because I really want to do it, then I'll actually find myself going through the learning process. So yeah, think of something you really want to create. And the great thing about hit film, that can be a visual effect from a, yeah, a movie that you've seen. It's like, oh, I want to create a Doctor Strange effect, or I want to create the Iron Man HUD effect and everything. Think of something that you really you think is super cool, and then we've probably got a tutorial that's going to get, uh, cover you with that. Once you've learned that, you'll realize how simple it can be to learn stuff, and then there's like hundreds of tutorials. So yeah, like you guys have an awesome YouTube channel where you guys like show your process, how you made that effect, and then I always like to go back and create it. I, we really want to do that more and more, but, and like uh, we want more and more of our like uh, people that use the software to come forward and make those tutorials too. It's really great making them in house uh, with Javert and Tom, but you know we would be putting out seven a week if we could, uh, and the only way we can do that is if we get people uh, external wanting to come and make tutorials. So yeah, if anyone wants to come and make a tutorial, just get in contact with us. I think you can use show off at fxhome.com. Uh, and if you've ever used After Effects or any other tool like that, your skills probably apply to HitFilm as well. So come make tutorials, it's great. So uh, what other products do you guys have? Uh, our other main product would be Emerge, which is our image editor, which is actually getting updated even faster than HitFilm. So we're doing loads of stuff in HitFilm, but the Emerge team, uh, not to be uh, outdone by the bigger product, are developing at an absolutely furious rate. So. There's loads of cool stuff coming in there and it's getting linked into HitFilm in a big way. So it's like the default image editor for HitFilm users as well. Uh, we also have a bunch of plugins that work in all of the other video editing software out there on the market and they're getting some big updates this year as well. So, uh, and there might be some other products coming uh, before too long as well uh, in the like iOS mobile space and some other stuff as well. So uh, keep an eye out. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so would there be like any people that you would like to personally collab with? Well, um, always Andrew Kramer. I, I've, I've met and talked to Andrew a few times, but you know, he there's, there's like two things that get people into visual effects. Well, there's, there's one thing that always comes back to being the main reason that people get into making visual effects movies, and it's Star Wars. And I imagine in the future it will be the Marvel movies, but until this point, 
if you go back to what makes you want to do something, it tends to be a lightsaber in Star Wars. It always does. But then once people have got past the lightsaber in Star Wars and, and you ask them what made you carry on learning, it tends to be Andrew Kramer. So he does some really wicked tutorials. So we'd love to work with him a bit more uh, in the future. Uh, he's a nice guy and has uh, you know a, a great following. Um, other than that, it's kind of, you know, just like there's so many amazing YouTubers out there that are doing great stuff. But we actually really want to make a, a video with our whole community, as it were. We, we don't know how to do it, but find some way that like people can actually collaborate as a, a larger community to put some kind of content together where everyone like plays a, a part in it. Um, we're just trying to work that out. We don't know how to, but yeah, it's... I'm really lucky I get to collaborate with the, the people at work all the time and they're, they're like some of my favourite filmmakers as well uh, and they really care about what they're doing uh, so you know I, I would love to you know collaborate more with the, the, the YouTubers that I mentioned before um, but probably you know um, it's more really up to our, 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 our guys like uh, Tom and Javert because uh, they're probably more in touch with, you know, who is going to be the next big thing. Yeah, so Angel Kramer is, like, awesome, honestly. Like, I follow, like, a lot of his tutorials, and honestly, like, guilty as pleasure, Lightsaber was my first effect. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, a, I, it's the reason I created software in the first place was lightsabers and a friend that was trying to do them, and it's, like, it's a great effect, and his uh, Saber plugin that makes really sweet, really sweet-looking lightsabers and everything. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's always going to be down to Star Wars, so that we'll always have that closeness with Star Wars. So what is your favorite part about your career? Uh, the team that I work with uh, is, is the best part of it. You know, even during this whole craziness that's going on at the moment, they've been so great. They support each other. Um, you know, you, you, you can always rely on them to show you something like amazing and inspiring. And they, they just... Yeah, they're just a really nice group of people. So, you know, when you go and then meet up with Sam and Nico, or you go out, uh, go up and meet with the guys over at Film Riot and everything, it's always, I'm always very proud of the team that I have to go with me because they're just really nice people. So that would be my favourite part. I love that we make the software because I like software and stuff like that. And I love that we've got 5 million users. But actually, it's the stories where you hear, like, we get them, we get an email and uh, it's, uh, some kid has said, oh, I've used HitFilm to make a presentation for my class and I got an A. And that's just like, that's the, that's the most awesome thing. You know, they, they, they had to go, they used the software and they got a good mark. Whether they carry on using the software or not, that is a great thing to hear. All the way through to we hear of ex-users of ours that they're working on the Star Wars movies or they're working in the Marvel Universe movies and they're like, Oh, I might have never got on with this or carried on with this if it wasn't for the community or if it wasn't for like the software or the tutorial or they normally have their own individual story of what it was to be part of FX Home. Um, and a lot of that we weren't even aware of at the time, but like we were aware of the sentiment and everything around it. And that's just amazing as well. And that was when we had like 10,000 users. So I'm looking forward to like, you know, five years time where every single TV production, every single movie has someone that like had a go with these tutorials, learn from Javert or learn from Tom and built something using a version of hit film. And that's just everywhere. That's just the most exciting thing. So yeah, I remember when I was in college, like I did like a whole presentation for my visual effect class and I show like how to create a portal like simulation in hit film by using the particle simulator effect. Wow. <laughs> well, this is what we need. We need this for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a spiral pearl thing. I got an A for that. Well, this is exactly what we want. We want people getting A. So what inspired you guys to do the sort of film that you do? Um, often it's just like, actually we're trying to think what would be something that would get someone to have a go at being creative. Because a lot of, I don't know why it is, but a lot of people think they're not creative who are actually are. They don't see the creativity that they have in everyday life, you know working out problems, just problem solving is part of being creative. So we always are trying to create something that um, like is kind of harmless fun to have a go at, you know, like, but also shows that we really love movies. So, you know, when we try and do Star Wars, we try and actually show that how much we love Star Wars and put a bit of that feeling of Star Wars in there, you know, whether it's building the props or it's like how it's presented. 
so yeah it's it's kind of we're all creatives we're all film like lovers in one way or another so we try and show that uh because i always feel like the people that we're reaching out to are just they're like us you know if we met them in real life we'd be friends so you know we're just trying to show that through what we're doing so that the whole community can feel like I'm in a community of like-minded people. So what is your favorite movie or TV show that you're currently watching right now? Uh, well, I rewatched Band of Brothers lately, and unfortunately nothing for me can get close to Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers is the best TV show ever made. Uh, I, I absolutely love it, and my well, one of my dreams is to actually get involved in whatever way, whether it's technical, whether it's behind the scenes, whether it's making the coffee. Uh, in a show like that i would love to i think it's an important story as well you know that story which you know about that that group of people in world war ii where they're not they're made out to be heroes but not in the like you know michael bay style hero but like you know they they really lived it and it, and i think it shows a decent portrayal of how it was for all sides as as in war is horrible no one should ever want to go to war again um and i think it's just a very important story and the they captured the stories of the actual veterans that were uh part of that story uh in a, which they needed to do before these people you know weren't there to tell the story anymore so i find that really compelling but i'm really always really surprised by the marvel franchise how well they strung what 20 something movies together and made a story arc that worked that you cared more at the end than you did at the beginning uh about what is a bunch of very silly things you know like in the real world sense people that are like gods and turn into big green people and you know all of these kind of things they're very you know, like silly concepts but they had that they perfectly balanced like taking not taking themselves too seriously with real heart which unfortunately you know a lot of superhero movies don't manage to do that, but like how they did it for 20 odd movies, I have no idea. It's just like, and the visual effects in the last ones were pretty amazing as well. So yeah, I got two more questions for you, then we're gonna wrap up here. So what is your plans for the future? Oh no, um, so the plans for the future are very much to kind of increase what we're doing right now, which is we're trying to make the best tools for people that are starting out in filmmaking and also for people that are going a bit further. So we're looking at like what's out there that there's really cool technologies appearing like machine learning and all of these kind of things. So we're trying to work out what technologies we can take from the high end and bring down to just regular people using them. Um, so we want to do that. We want to make sure we can put more content out there and we want to keep collaborating with like awesome people. And sometimes that's like, most of the time it's creators and that's awesome but it's also other companies so we work a lot with uh, Vegas who make uh, a really awesome editor and we're partners with them and make products uh, for them as well um, and it's like to work with brands and people that we really really like so that we can make really cool content for all the uh, all the community that we have uh, and just as I said earlier like you know really big for us is trying to improve all aspects of the community because you know we see a lot of really lovely people in our community. They send us nice messages on a daily basis that they don't have to do, but they send us, which is a weird thing, you know, send a software company a message saying, oh, I really like this. This was really cool. Um, so we just want to increase that and uh, and get more collaboration going on between the actual like community members as well. So yeah, this is the final question I normally have at the end. So anything you want to know about me? Yeah, what's your plans? My plans are I want to be a film director. Right now, I'm kind of like trying out every genre to see like, like what I like the most. I'm trying to build out my experience as a filmmaker. I made a horror film, and now I'm trying to make a sci-fi film. What, what What's your favorite film? Oh, my favorite film. Um, I'm going to have to go with Jurassic Park, honestly. Oh well, that is a, that that that's definitely like a top five for me as well. So yeah, that that. I mean, you can't go wrong with Jurassic Park, but yeah, that's awesome. So at the moment, you're saying you're trying out all the genres. Have you had, had a favorite one so far? So yeah, so so far I like horror, sci-fi, and action. That's really hard though. They're the hard ones, you know, like sci-fi is hard to get that balance right. Horror as well, you know, you're trying to like evoke such like serious emotions in people. But then action is like the hardest thing you can film. So you picked all the hard stuff, uh, which is good. You should pick the hard stuff. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, good luck with that. That's pretty amazing. So I look forward to going to the cinema at some point and seeing one of your movies. Oh, thank you, Ben. I'll be there in the front row being like, woo! <laughs> Super cool. I remember when I saw Jurassic Park as a kid, I was like, oh my God, dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think, yeah, dinosaurs never get old. Uh, so yeah, they, like, it's, it's, it's they always look very cool to see in the cinema. But like, yeah. If you can add horror and action in there as well. Although, you know, I, I was pretty scared in the first Jurassic Park film when I saw that. It has got, has great suspense. It's like really, really tense in loads of moments. So yeah, well, uh, yeah, I wish you loads of luck. Uh, I'm sure you'll get there. So yeah, that's cool. Oh, thank you, man. Awesome. This is the end of this podcast right now. I'd like to say thank you, Josh, for so much coming on the show. It was a pleasure having a chat with you and I'll see you guys in the next podcast.